Do you know that you or your users can connect to SharePoint and OneDrive and what's most important, the data that is stored there around Microsoft 365 from ChatGPT, from any type of subscription? Sounds interesting. It could be great opportunity, but also big concern from the perspective of the privacy and security of your data. In this video, I will show you how the connection from ChatGPT to SharePoint or OneDrive looks like and why you should be concerned about it and what you can do if you are IT administrator and you want to be sure that any activity like that will be verified and secure for your intellectual property and privacy of the data in your organization. If you like this video, I highly recommend you to leave the thumbs up, subscription or the comment below help me to work with Google algorithms around YouTube. Now we will switch to my screen where I will show you how this feature works and how you can prepare yourself and your organization to face it. Let me stop you for a moment before we will move to my screen where I will show you how to connect ChatGPT to SharePoint and OneDrive and what are the risks there. I want to encourage you to check Copilot Quick Start training. So training I prepared to help you or your business users to use Copilot in the Microsoft 365 more efficient way and also in the very secure approach. Check the link in the description. You will get their special offer for the training. And now we're switching to my screen where I will show you new opportunities and challenges connected with ChatGPT. You need to be aware that every user of ChatGPT right now have the possibility to add data from an app. And in this case, they will be able to connect to Microsoft OneDrive, in this case, work or school type of account. And that also includes SharePoint. So what will happen when we will click on that? You will be navigated to the application consent where you are proving OpenAI ChatGPT application to access your data. If you or your user will accept that consent, OpenAI application will be able to read your files, read items in the SharePoint site collections, read your files, read the files that you have access to, maintain the access to that data, and also read through your profile. So in this case, and there is also the option that you can send that consent in the context of whole organization. And what will happen when we'll approve that button? This application will be registered in the Microsoft 365 Enterprise application registration with the consent to grant the access to that data. Users will have the capability to use enterprise data from Microsoft 365, from OneDrive and from SharePoint inside ChatGPT, which in general is great functionality, but you need to remember that not every type of subscription in the ChatGPT works with your data the same way. We switch to the pricing list of ChatGPT, which exactly describe two types of the application. So you can see we have two segments of the planned subscriptions that are offered by ChatGPT, which are dedicated for the private use of the business users. And we have separated team and enterprise subscriptions. And what is most important and why? What is the most important difference between these two types of the applications or subscriptions and why they are grouped in the, this specific way? Because top level applications have different privacy policy than the bottom ones. If you will use team subscription or enterprise subscription for the ChatGPT provided by OpenAI, your data will never be used to train the data, will never be shared with third party products, teams, third party organizations. You will be responsible for retention of your data. Your data will be safe. But in other case, if your user or you will use free, plus or pro subscription, you allow OpenAI to use your data. Of course, inside the application, there is a small tick that you can turn on to exclude that data. But at the same time, if you read through privacy policy, the recommendation is if you want to maintain privacy of your data, you should use team or enterprise plans. So what does it mean for you? If your business user will connect 
through ChatGPT, through SharePoint or OneDrive in the Microsoft 365, and will use free plus or pro subscriptions, there is a possibility that that data will be used to train large language models. Moreover, OpenAI will get the access, not only the data that will be selected inside the ChatGPT prompts, but also to the data that the user have access to. So what you can do to secure your environment, first of all, recommend your business users to use Team or Enterprise subscription. This is the most important element, which I highly recommend to every organization, but you can do one more thing. You can create the policies that will allow you to verify what users can do, what kind of applications can be registered by them, what kind of access to the, your data in the Microsoft 365 organization can be done by them. So what you can do as an IT administrator to secure your environment or have more control about who can grant access to the third party applications, to what kind of data. First of all, I already mentioned that if the user will consent, accept the consent of the application, the application will be registered in the enterprise apps in the Enter ID. So now we're switching to the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, where we will have the possibility to set up the policies that will increase your default experience for the end business users. So first of all, Entra Admin Center, go to application, enterprise applications, and consent and permissions. And in the user consent setting, you have the possibility to select how the user behavior will look like. So how the end user experience will look like. First of all, by design, allow users concerns for apps. So you allowing business users to accept the consent for the application, but this will be possible only to the verified application. So ID admins have to accept and approve application first or select the application that have low impact for your organization. Or in the last scenario, you can block the possibility for the end users to accept that kind of consent for the business apps. It depends on you what will be your preferable scenario, but there is one more option that could help to take better control about end user behavior. So we switching to the admin consent setting and you can see you can select the approval process for each scenario. So you can allow users to um, accept the consent for the application, but every request will need to be verified by the admin IT team. And you can add users, groups, or roles that will have the capability to verify the application. So for instance, you do not want to block your business users because you know that there is a policy about using team and enterprise application, but still you want to have the control of what is happening. So you will verify every request that will be sent by business users. Again, you can mix these two settings. So this will help you to build the scenario that will work for organization to on the one hand, do not block business users from productive work, but at the same time to be sure that your data will not leak through OpenAI large language models. As you can see, by design is super simple to grant OpenAI and ChatGPT access to the data inside Microsoft 365. Your users can use ChatGPT to connect to SharePoint or OneDrive. And if they will use free plus or pro subscriptions, there is small risk that that data could be used to teach large language models behind. Use the knowledge I shared with you about possible policies, check how your Microsoft 365 tenant is configured and prepare better setup that will guarantee that none of your data will anyhow leak through OpenAI or any other third party application outside of your organization and prepare better for safe and efficient use of AI tools. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video.